Well, welcome back to the Ripple Effect podcast. This is part five of our five-part series uh, that we have been doing um, on the back of a message I shared with our church at Discovery on Mother's Day called The Ripple Effect, where we have been deep diving into five stories of remarkable women in scripture. And um, we've been looking at the concentric circles of the ripple effect that happens when somebody in scripture encounters God and everything changes from that point. So we started off by talking about Ruth and how one encounter with God transforms not just the individual but the whole household. Beautiful story. And then we talked about um, the woman with the issue of blood, one of my favourite stories in scripture where the encounter doesn't just transform her and heal her immediately but the entire crowd are impacted. Then we talked about the woman at the well and looked at how that encounter with Jesus transformed not just that woman but the entire village. And then we went another layer out and talked about Esther and how one encounter with God and when God intersects a life, an entire nation can be impacted. And we looked at that broad scale. And now we're at week five talking about Mary, the ripple effect of all ripple effects, this unmarried teenager from Nowheresville who finds favour with God, the scripture tells us, and is chosen to carry the saviour of the world, Jesus, the hope of humanity. A remarkable story, um, story that's found in Luke chapter 1, if you want to go back and reread that sometime during the week for for those of you who are listening. And, um, yeah, as this story goes, What's interesting about this story is that when the angel, she has an angelic visit from not just any angel but the angel Gabriel. What's interesting about this is that the the commentators say there'd been no signs or miracles for quite some time and then this happens. And as angels tend to do in Scripture, the first thing they say that Gabriel says to her when he encounters her is do not be afraid because clearly their countenance must have been reasonably overwhelming. But it's striking to me because straight away in the way that Mary, this, this encounter unfolds, she is open to the movement of God happening to her, which strikes me because she's so young from this small town and I think it gives us probably some clues about who she was Mm. and some of her story but maybe we'll just open it up there because I've got beautiful Liv I didn't even introduce you (laughs) I got so excited about the story I'm so sorry listeners let me introduce to you our special guests on the podcast today I've got the beautiful Olivia McDowell who is our worship pastor here at Discovery and Beck Lambert is back again for round three loving having Beck on this podcast Um, Beck's our executive pastor here at Discovery Um, so my apologies for not introducing you sooner it's all good that's great but I'm going to throw to you ladies to share uh, maybe let's just start with what is it, what jumps out at you in this story, what strikes you, what do you think the author is wanting us to see and notice? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'll jump in. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think originally when we were talking about Mary and, and looking into this part of Scripture straight away, it stood out to me just how willing she was to for the will of God to just come about in her life. Like straight away she has that posture of surrender and um, servant-heartedness to just let God do what whatever he was doing with her. Um, and that it's so overwhelming as you read it mm. that there's no hesitation in her mm. to, to be like, oh, but why me? Like she's just straight away just the, I'll just let the will of God be um, in my life. And, yeah, that was definitely the... The strongest thing that stood out to me. Yeah, that's funny because, yeah, she doesn't say why me, but she's like, how's it going to happen because I'm a virgin? Just please explain. I'm I'm up for it, but I just don't understand how this is actually going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's not even questioning, yeah, what? why has God, like, chosen me for for this time? They're just like, yeah. She's gone straight to the how. Oh, how's this going to work? It's like like it's such a female thing to do. Like (laughs) straight to the details. Give me the details. (laughs) So true. Uh, yes, similarly, I think I've picked up on a couple of things that she says, um, her response, I am the Lord's servant, may everything you have said about me come true. And then later on in the song that um, mm. is written there, she says, 
in the midst, he says, he has done great things for me. Mm. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And I just thought how, how easy it is for us to read that all these years later, mm. knowing how the story <laughs> unfolded for her. But she's, she's saying that stuff in real time, mm. not knowing how it all is going to wrap. Mm. And, and, yeah. and also, like, really importantly, she has no regard for mm. her own uh, social standing, mm. being an unmarried mm. uh, um, woman, being pregnant, like what that would do for her in her social standing and mm. and being um, judged and, and mm. probably an outcast. No regard for any of that. All she says is, you know, he's done great things for me mm. um, and all the generations will call me. But it's like she had this lens into the future that mm. is incredible yeah. because... Um, we get to see it all these years later, but she didn't have that perspective. And so mm. that jumped out at me. And I also just personally loved that she went, she she pretty much picked up straight away and then went to Elizabeth. And I was like, Elizabeth was obviously a very mm. safe person in her mm. life and recognising the work of God in mm. in her life. And so I I just loved the um the idea of her mm. running to Elizabeth and um spending time with her as well. There, there are a couple of things yeah. that stood out for me. Mm. I love that you mentioned the song because um, this song, Mary's song, uh, also called uh, The Magnificent, obviously very central in the Catholic faith mm-hmm. and also finds itself in the common book of prayer, not so celebrated in we don't talk about it as much. But what's interesting about this, and I would be interested to hear your thoughts on this, Liv, as a songwriter, but she gets to Elizabeth's house tells Elizabeth the news and Elizabeth asks her a question and her response is to sing a song. But what's interesting about the song is that she's actually referencing Isaiah, scriptures Mm -hmm. from the prophecy that Isaiah had given. So it's a little bit of a sneaky clue that even though she's a teenager, even though she's from this little town, she actually knows the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So we can... Um, presume that perhaps she grew up in a Jewish family and mm-hmm. either went to synagogue or had the scriptures taught to her in her home because otherwise she wouldn't be singing about mm-hmm. a prophecy. How would she know to sing about that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's not just a teenager that knows nothing. She actually mm-hmm. does know these mm-hmm. stories. And I've often wondered Um, when the angel came to her and when she learns this news, whether her mind would have thought Mm. back to that and gone, I've heard these stories be taught Mm. and now all of a sudden I'm in the story. Mm. But this is like, is this, this is happening. I'm now a central character in the story that I've known about and been taught about since I was a little girl. Yeah. Um, but from a songwriter's point of view, you know, because this is a testimony, right? She's yeah. singing a testimony and she's also singing of the, the story of the people of God. She's mm-hmm. referring back to that. So yeah. I don't know what your thoughts are when you read this mm-hmm. song, Liv, and just your experience of the way you go about what is it that inspires you to write yeah. songs or where does that come from? Yeah, it's so interesting because, like, all throughout Scripture there's people like David, people like the Israelites where whenever they've met with God, straight away their response is a song. Mm. And, that's, and Hannah. Yeah, and yeah. Hannah. It's, like, it's beautiful that that just continues in, in mm. Mary's story. It's, like, straight away the things that are happening within her, she can't help but sing. Mm. Like, that's it's such a um, a beautiful gift that God's given us just as as creative people mm. um and that yeah she's she's obviously ab- absorbed that information it's become a part of her and now that's that's the way that it's coming out of her like it's this beautiful this beautiful song I also noticed too reading through mm. the um yeah through through that song it almost points to the Beatitudes as well that mm. later on Jesus then um yeah preaches that yeah, there's like there's quite a few things. Um, How about I just read the songs? Lyrics, yeah, I've got it here. So this is yeah. Luke one um, from verse forty six, and so she's. It says Mary responded. She's responding to Elizabeth. It says, "Oh, how my soul praises the Lord! How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior." 
For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. Mm. He has filled the hungry with good things, that's a reference to Psalms, and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful, for he made the promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's almost like when I was reading this, I almost saw it as a link to to the prophecy to now where she is and then also to when Jesus would then preach the Beatitudes where he talks about, you know, those who hunger for righteousness will be blessed, Mm. those who, um, what is it, the... um, the poor in spirit, like mm. will inherit the earth, like all of all of those things. It's these really similar themes mm. that come through. Um, that I thought was beautiful. That she's that's just part of her. That's just who she mm. is, and it's something that mm-hmm. that God has favor upon in her life. That it like it says from the start of um, Luke chapter one as well. That you you really start to get this picture of who Mary is mm. in mm. in that way. That she's yeah she's very aware mm. to to who God is and the character of God. And what's awesome is that the, the Mary's life and and what we, the journey we go on with her through scripture doesn't stop with this one encounter. So obviously, you know, she ushers in uh, the saviour of the world. She's chosen, the one person chosen for that job. But then, you know, she has a whole life after that, raising Jesus for the first 12 years of his life before mm-hmm. he then goes to the temple. But she's present all the way through. We see her at the wedding in, in Cana. We see her at the cross. Mm. She's all the way through. And actually the last um, mention of her in Scripture is in Acts chapter 1 and she's there at the, in the first church mm-hmm. praying with the, with the disciples in the upper room. Mm-hmm. And I love that because sometimes we just look at this one story in isolation and, and mm-hmm. our mental image of her is the teenager who yeah. birthed Jesus. Mm-hmm. But she became a woman and had a whole life. Mm. Um, and had other children and raised a family and mm. and still held this tension of knowing that, mm. you know, Jesus was hers but not hers and and she's yeah. still present. And then after Jesus has died and, and has, has been resurrected and then has ascended and the Holy Spirit's come, she's there mm. when the gospel starts to be spread and the church mm. starts to... Um, you know, move out from from there. And so I love that, you know, she's not just one dimensional, but she's actually mm. woven all through this story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I also love it that um, the women get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they're the first ones entrusted mm. um, with these stories. And um, when mm. Mary goes to Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth gets it. Yeah. Immediately. And I just, I think that's just a beautiful little detail mm. about how, women can intuit, like they are more intuitively mm. picking up or, or literally picking up on mm. what God what is doing, doing and being on the forefront of his plans yeah. to literally change the world. Mm. There's also a really cool mirroring detail in that story of, of Elizabeth, which is just um, right where we are as well. And it's sort of before and after this part. And, um, you know, then we hear that uh, Elizabeth has also conceived and it says, for the word of the Lord will never fail. And it's this beautiful little throwback to or a mirror of um, Abraham and Sarah yes. at the beginning where Sarah was bar- Sarai, Sarah was barren for so long mm. and, you know, they thought that and but they'd had this promise that through them would be many nations and they couldn't quite understand how God was going to make that happen because she was barren and then, you know, the Lord enabled her to conceive and then we have this story where Elizabeth's in the same position. She and Zechariah are not, have not been able to have children and then mm. Zechariah has a visitation and then Mary has the visitation and so sort of almost like this full we've come all the way back around again, uh, which is another cool detail in this story. Yeah. Um, but yes, lots of themes around courage, obedience, faithfulness. Um, are there any other key themes that really strike you about this story um, as you read it? Obviously, we've talked about the openness of Mary just to the movement of God and her willingness to be obedient to that. Um, mm. Yeah, we we obviously just um, we have another podcast out with 
Esther, and that was one of the things that I was picking up, and you mentioned it in the in the Esther podcast as well about um, yeah the the least and the yeah. lowliest mm-hmm. being chosen, um, and how in in both these those stories God placed so much value on the obedience and the availability mm-hmm. of the one. In, in the story and so I just think that's really beautiful and just that God is no respecter of persons. He will use who he wants, mm. when he wants, how he wants mm. um, and our choice is whether to cooperate and get on mm. board with what mm. God's doing and Mary is a beautiful example of someone who has no regard for herself in the midst of mm. God's plans. That statement that she makes, I think you read it out for us before, Beck. may it be to me according to your word, or I think the, the version you read out was, may everything you've said about me come true. Mm. I find that such a challenging mm. response. Every time I read that, it causes me to ask myself, um, is that my default posture mm-hmm. when the Lord um, extends an invitation to me or I feel that sense of Holy Spirit prompting me to do something or, you know, um, it's something that, that the Lord puts before me is my first response, may it be to me according to your word. If I'm honest, it's probably like I want that to be my first response and in <laughs> in my like in my desire, like in my in the desire of my heart, is that that would be my first response, and I think maybe it, it's there, but it also comes with mm. all the things that could possibly go wrong about yeah. that, you know, and, and that might be a personality thing for me, but I'm, I'm always thinking about, you know, mm. why that might not be able, why that's not possible, or why I'm a ridiculous choice, or like thinking, God, like what are you even thinking? This is, mm. you know. Um, I don't know. Do you find? I don't know if you find that challenging. I find that a challenging statement. May it, and but I yeah. Mm-hmm. May it be to me according to your word. I think it's a great discipleship journey encouragement. How do we keep moving towards that being our default posture? Yeah. yeah. And a level. And you know, I think that's part of the journey: learning to trust in God's sovereignty and His plan enough to know that He will never ask you to do something that he won't also then equip you for. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't ask Mary to do that and then not provide a way mm. yeah, or a pathway. Yeah. And people around And people. Like, like Elizabeth, you know, they're mm. both like pregnant at the same time. Like it's mm. it's so beautiful that that happens. Mm. Well, and like, Joseph who could have been yeah. like, mm. you know, really put the betrothal mm. system or process, that, that cultural process in yeah. jeopardy because, mm. yeah. Yeah, and obviously the Lord was gracious in giving Joseph his own encounter mm. to reassure him that this was all part of the yeah. plan and it was going to be okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I I resonate with what you're saying, Jode, Sarah, about you want that to be your first response. Yes, mm. let it be as you say, you know, have your way, Lord. And they're they're really they're easy words to say, but really hard to walk mm. out because Mary mm. still had to walk out what that meant. Um, it would not have necessarily protected her from mm. ridicule mm. or shame or, you know, how the family would have felt about it. She still had to walk mm. through that. And so as I think about when I'm l- like counting the cost of the yes, yes. Lord, and mm. just wanting to lean into the yeses of God and, and what he's asking of me, but being aware that there will at times be a personal cost mm-hmm. and yeah. people might not understand yeah. or might misinterpret it, but, um, but yeah, trying to get beyond mm. myself in those moments, I think. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, this has been a rich conversation. Maybe one final encouragement or invitation for our listeners as we bring this episode and really the series to a close, Mm -hmm. what would you like to leave people with? Yeah, I think for me, just throughout this whole, this whole section of of scripture, I just, I love that the servant heart, the servant heartedness of Mary, Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. to me is, it's such a, a beautiful way to live your life as someone who's following God, Mm -hmm. just to constantly be in surrender for what he is doing and what he's outworking mm. through you. Um, 
because, I mean, look what incredible things came from Mary's life, but all of the mm. women that we've talked about, like, and that you've been talking about, um, you just never know what God's mm. doing and it's it will always it will always end with glory to God and mm. um, mm-hmm. and, a, and a life that is just so beautiful and so rich with his presence and um, I think for me that's something that that I always want and mm. yeah Mary just is one of one of those people in scripture that just gives us such a beautiful strong picture of that yeah, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say probably two things. Um, I'm really inspired by Mary's story to make worship a part of my mm. obedience. She she obeyed but then she just worshipped through mm. that and mm. I'm sure that was life and sustenance to her as she went on that journey and so it was just a reminder mm. For me to and and for everybody to to make worship a really integral part of our mm. our obedience in in the Lord and also um, touched on it earlier about Elizabeth's response and recognizing the work of God in Mary and what mm. was happening for her and um, I'm encouraged and inspired to to be that Elizabeth yeah. in other people's stories too and recognise when God's at work and encourage yes. that and call it out and mm, beautiful. cheer it on and, um, yeah, and see see the um, the beauty that unfolds from that and mm. be on that side of the mm. equation rather than the, the naysayer and the, mm. um, the, the cynic sort of the side. So I'm really inspired by Elizabeth's response in that mm. story too. Love it. Mm. Well, thank you, ladies. This has been a rich conversation. I've loved it. And thank you for being part of this episode. This brings our final episode of The Ripple Effect to a close. We're not sure what's coming next, but stay in the loop. And um, we're looking forward to bringing you some more um, podcast fun soon. Yay. Thanks for having us, Chase. Loved it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.